You may think you know what that sound is, an annoying spouse keeping you awake at night, or perhaps a hibernating bear in the middle of January. But what you might be surprised to know is that they're actually cells, cancer cells, sleeping cancer cells to be exact. And while they don't actually snore, they may hold the key to why some cancers can remain dormant in one's body for years at a time before awakening a sleeping giant within. It's going to take about a week or two to expand these cells. Dr. Sridhar Ramaswamy and colleagues at the Mass General Hospital Cancer Center are some of the first researchers to analyze these particular cells in depth. Part of the reason why people haven't studied this aspect of cancer before is that in some senses it's very difficult to study. If cancer is ultimately a disease of proliferation, um, there's really no point in studying non-proliferating cells. They're probably harmless. It just begs the question, well, what are they doing there? Are they all really just useless? Or do some of them have a role in the disease? Uh, and particularly, do some of them have a role in causing these kinds of late relapses we're all concerned about in the clinic? Inspired as a young medical student on rotation in the ER, Ramaswamy recalls a patient rushed in by ambulance whose heart had stopped. While trying to save her, he was startled by the cause of her problems. And we found out that the reason that her heart had stopped was because the sac around her heart, uh, which normally contains fluid, uh, was filled with cancer cells. Uh, and when we eventually looked more deeply, we found that those cancer cells were actually breast cancer cells. That woman had been treated for breast cancer and declared cured 15 years earlier. It really started me thinking, how is it possible that a woman can have a tumor, can be cured for such a long period of time, and then can have this seeming recurrence in a very odd place which can ultimately cause her demise. What usually makes cancers so lethal is their cells' ability to divide and multiply, growing and metastasizing throughout. But common treatment therapies like chemotherapy and the newer targeted therapies can often kill these fast-growing cells. It's the ones that divide and remain hidden and asleep that intrigue Ramaswamy. We really don't have any drugs that are capable of killing dormant cancer cells. Part of that, some people believe, may be because when a cell is sleeping, uh, it doesn't really require much. It's kind of when we're sleeping at night, uh, we don't really eat, do any of the normal daily functions that we would do when we were awake. And therefore, we're kind of hibernating and we're hunkered down. And it may be that notion which is behind why these cells are so resistant. Part of it may be that intrinsically sleeping cancer cells are um, uh, resistant to many maneuvers, and so we have to figure out some really clever ways to attack them. But Ramaswamy and colleagues are working on a different hypothesis. He knows these are not your garden variety cancer cells. They even look different. One of the real surprises that we found in our research was that we thought that when cells go to sleep, there may just be individual cells that are kind of revved up and then all of a sudden they go dormant. But actually what we found was that these cells actually arise during cell division itself. So what happens, a cell which is actively dividing, divides in an asymmetric fashion. So normally cancer cells, when they divide, will produce two daughter cells, each of which is capable of proliferating. We found that these sleeping cancer cells arise during cell division when a cancer cell divides asymmetrically. And what that means is that it produces one daughter cell that's able to divide, and another daughter cell, which is asleep. And this asymmetric division is a very unique uh, type of cell division. The only other place in biology where it's really observed is in uh, stem cells. Another critical component they're studying is whether these cells are truly sleeping, or could they actually be doing something more sinister that's playing a greater role in the proliferation of cancers? For a long time, we've wondered to what degree uh, the individual cells that go from a primary tumor to a distant site in a patient um, are actually uh, seeds that are specialized in some way to make that journey and then sit down in, in, a, in an organ like the lung or the brain and take root. And one of the things we're actively studying right now is whether these uh, quiescent cancer cells uh, are actually capable of seeding distant sites. Are they the metastatic seeds? This is novel research and a new way of thinking about cancer development. Ramaswamy and his peers published early key findings in 2011, and more recently a second breakthrough paper, which received rapid impact status in molecular cancer research from the AACR. Their lab experiments initially began with funding from the Stand Up to Cancer organization. I'd say based on that funding, we were able to get very aggressive about really pursuing our ideas and identifying um, uh, first markers 
that track uh, with these cells so that we could actually identify these sleeping cancer cells both in experimental systems as well as in patients. Um, and then uh, we pushed that work further in order to really understand whether there were molecular mechanisms that uh, regulate this behavior. While Ramaswamy concedes there is a lot yet to learn, he believes they're on a road not traveled when it comes to the vast field of cancer research. We'd very much like to start talking to various groups, be they in the pharmaceutical industry or in academia, to try to see whether we could start to develop therapies based on this science. And so I'd say over the next year, watch out for um, studies from our lab where we try to model these sleepers and target them in animal models uh, with the longer term goal of developing therapies based on that. Ultimately, he hopes to answer the question he dreams about. Uh, and the real question is, are they really quiet? Are they actually asleep? Or do they have any functions? And maybe even more importantly, uh, uh, when these cells are in that hibernating phase, um, uh, we believe that they're able to resist a whole variety of different therapies. And so one of the things that we're trying to do is to understand whether that's the case, uh, and if so, what we could do about it.